Hey guys, this is Abhishek from GadgetsTube.com and today we are going to do a full review of the Carbon S5 Titanium. Here we have the device with us and this device looks pretty good in terms of the overall look and feel uh, as well as the build quality. The build quality of this device is pretty good. You have nice quality of plastic and other materials which Carbon has actually used while manufacturing this phone. Again from the design of this phone you might confuse it with a high end Android phone but again it comes at a very basic price point of around 10 to 12 thousand rupees so it is a budget Android phone which has a quite premium look as you can see and in terms of the overall display the display is also pretty good it has got a QHD display the resolution is 514 to 960 and if you actually take a closer look over the display the display is pretty good in terms of the formation of pixels uh, although the text may look kind of soft if you take a closer look but as far as the viewing angles of the display are concerned as you can see the viewing angles are quite wide and quite good on this device as you can see here let me just give you a hardware overview of the device uh, at the bottom we have no ports on this device again a good design from carbon and then you have a power and sleep key on the top on the right hand side over here which gives you good amount of feedback on the top you have the micro usb port for data syncing and charging as you can see and here you have the 3.5 mm audio jack for in insert for using any kind of headphones with this particular phone uh, you get a standard kind of headphone within the package of this phone and then you have a 8 megapixel camera at the back side with led flash as you can see and it is an autofocus camera here you have the loudspeaker as you can see which again is not very much visible when you take a look over the phone uh, on this side you have the volume rocker as you can see which again is a nice uh, hard button which gives you feedback and at the front you have the 5 inch of display uh, with QHD resolution and it is an IPS LCD display viewing angles are pretty good you have a 2 megapixel fixed focus camera over here you have the proximity sensors over here the earpiece is over here and the touch capacity buttons are there within the body of the phone they are not within the screen and let me just open the phone from the back side to show the dual sim phone you have the sim card slot 1 and sim card slot 2 micro sd memory card slot over here and the memory sd card doesn't come within the package of this device memory on this device is 2000 mAh i have some hardware information of this device so the product is msm8625 and see it seems to be the qualcomm uh, chipset but i am not sure about it and then you have the processor which is an arm b7 based architecture processor and it is quad core processor clogged at 1.2 gigahertz as you can see and if we take a look over the display resolution the defective di display resolution is 514 to 960 we do not have any information about the gpu on this device let's take a look over the sensors so the sensors which are there on this device is the accelerometer sensor magnetic field sensor orientation sensor light and proximity sensors the version of android which we have on this device preloaded is 4.1.2 and if we take a look over the storage over here so the device has 4 gb of internal storage and out of which around 1.41 gb is actually available to the user whereas 1.40 gb part of the phone storage is actually reserved by the operating system for the pre-installed apps and other data this device does allow moving apps to the sd card but you cannot install apps directly on the sd card on this device so here we have one app which we have opened the settings and we can move this app to the sd card as you can see this has around 1 gb of ram and out of 1 gb of ram 400 mb of ram is currently used and you get around 435 mb of ram free which is fairly good for installing more applications on this device and the device is fairly responsive when it is running multiple applications in the background a support for automatic brightness and then you can also adjust the brightness as normal brightness and it can it also have this new option called dynamic brightness which will further enhance the overall capability of the device in terms of the power saving and it will increase the overall battery backup if you use dynamic brightness comes to the wallpaper support you have support for static wallpapers live wallpapers but the video wallpapers are not supported on this device. 
you get around five home screens on this device which you cannot increase or decrease and if we take a look over the application which comes pre-installed you have all the regular applications which you see on any other android phone you also have google chrome pre-installed on this device you have a food panda application which allows you to order food and you have fm radio pre-installed on this device apart from this you also get kingsoft office with which you will be able to edit documents you also get next gen tv which will allow you to watch some tv channels for free and you have whatsapp application download link actually not the application pre-installed but you get wechat pre-installed on this device and you also get a new application called world clock which will allow you to track time from different time zones as you can see as far as the display is concerned the display is pretty good when it comes to rendering of colors as well as the saturation of colors as you can see you i can view this picture from this viewing angle so the viewing angle for the display are quite wide the display is quite vibrant when it comes to video playback especially when it comes to high definition video playback now let me just play temple run 2 for you to actually show you the responsiveness of the touch screen as well as the sensors which are there on this device especially the gravity sensor So as far as the playback of the game is concerned, I do not notice any problem till now. The draw distance for the game is also pretty good. Graphics are pretty nice as well. There is no problem with the playback. And when it comes to the gravity sensor, it is also working pretty well. The screen again is quite responsive to the finger touch. As you can see. This is how the messaging application looks like and again as we can see the messaging application is quite optimized in terms of the overall look and feel. It is not the stock android messaging application which you see on other phones. Uh, the UI is changed and if we actually talk about the keyboard, the keyboard keys are pretty big and equally spaced out from each other so we did not face any problem while typing on this device. When it comes to the finger swipe to type, it is supported on this device as you can see. So this is something which we like. Now this is how the phone dialer looks like and as you can see uh, you can hide the keypad as well. Any option of making a video call directly from the phone dialer. Even if I select a specific contact I do not see the option of making a video call for that particular contact. Here we have a video which is recorded at 720p and let me just try to play this video. So as you can see the device is playing the 720p video without any issues. Let me just try forwarding the video. So the forwarding and reversing the video does work. Uh, there is a little lag of like one or two seconds before it will start playing the video again when you try to forward it. Here we have another video which is recorded at 1080p from a different device and let me just try to play this video. So as you can see there are little lag when it comes to the graphic. There are some audio and video sync issues while playing a 1080p video on this device problem can be solved if you play this video in a third party application like MX Video Player and if you enable hardware decoding on that. So the entry to score which we have got for this device is 10532 which seems to be pretty good for a budget device like this and this is how the detailed scores look like as you can see. When it comes to the multi test support this device supports 5 touch points. As so the Nina Mark score which we have got on this device is 38 FPS and this device is capable of playing the casual games like Angry Bird, Temple Run 2, Temple Run OZ and Subway Surfer as well without any issues. When it comes to the high graphic intensive games like Dead Trigger, Frontline Commando, the racing games like Asphalt 7 and Need for Speed, it, it is capable of playing most of these games but not all. Now as you can see the scores which we have got for the Quadrant Standard on this particular device. Uh, the total score is 4717 if you cannot read it I can read it for you. The CPU is 13244 and then you have memory 1725, input and output is 6416 and 2D is 476, 3D is 1725. So the sc score seems to be pretty good when it comes to a budget device like this and this is how the device actually ranks when you compare it with the other devices. When it comes to playing high definition videos on this device from YouTube. It does play these videos in the high quality format, not in the high definition format because of the resolution which is there on the device. So when it comes to the navigation support, you do have assisted GPS on this device but make sure that we check these options as well as this one before you can actually use this device for navigation. You can also share internet from this device by creating a Wi-Fi hotspot. It does support Wi-Fi tethering 
that means you can create a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. You also have USB tethering supported and Bluetooth tethering is also supported on this device. Now when it comes to the OTG support, you do not have OTG support on this device because nothing happens when you when I connect a flash drive using the OTG cable and even if I open the file manager, I do not see the USB flash drive over here to access. As far as the battery backup for this device is concerned, it lasted for us for around one day, sometimes more than one day as well when we were using this device with a single sim card uh, when we were using this device with the dual sim card it lasted for us around one day uh, maximum around uh, 17 to 19 hours as far as the led notifications are concerned you do not have led notifications on this device either in new delhi So the internet is quite slow as of now but Google now runs on this device without any issues it's 33 degrees as you can see. Delhi. As far as the video calling is concerned the device does support the Skype application for video calling and you can do a high definition video chat using this device using the 2 megapixel camera which is there at the front. All from us as far as the quick hands on review of the Carbon S5 Titanium is concerned we like this device this is a pretty decent choice when it comes to the budget smartphone it is a very good competitor to the Micromax Canvas A116 and again this one, com this one comes at a much cheaper price as compared to the Micromax Canvas A116 you can go for this device do let us know if you have any specific question for this device we would love to help you you can like this video by clicking the like button below you can subscribe to our youtube video channel for more videos like this by clicking the subscribe button below thanks for watching this video this is abhishek signing off thank you